Okay, welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose. Today, um, we have got James, production manager for the 1370. He wants to talk through all the modifications that they've done to the Seawind 1370 between actually getting the boat out, test sailing it, and now what needs to be done, and that's gonna be replicated across the whole range from here on. This is interesting. However, and just to put this into frame, if you get a couple of idiots on the internet going, well, why would you buy hull one? Whatever changes they make to hull two, three, four, five, six, and onwards, they are also making to hull one. Why would they not do that? Number one, the boat needs to be like exactly the same as all the others. But secondly, they need to make sure that the modifications that they make actually work. So they're actually modding hull one, making those modifications, then replicating it in all the other boats. Keep watching, this is gonna be super interesting. So now that hole one is just in its final stages, let's just talk you through hole two. Now what that like, hole two is obviously Ruby Rose two. And I want to kind of like run through with you again exactly how this all works. Different teams of people come in to do different jobs. So we have in this case, the electricians have all gone in. This is our circuitry. I would say to you that I think the electrician, we have a, a patron who is a very, very, he does, uh, Rob, Robin Yoka but like, I want him to kind of like grade this work. It's very, very neat. So we've got the NMEA 2000 data cables there, and then all the master vault stuff that goes in there, all looking amazing. And then batteries, batteries, batteries. So those are gonna be our three lithium batteries, coupled with this two kilowatts of solar powers on this coach route. And then this whole thing is gonna be, well, we should be able to live at anchor if our calculations are correct and we are going to have a video further on actually detailing the power requirements on a 24 volt system i'm going to do some maths because i've never actually done the calculations for 24 volt about how long we can stay at anchor and what we will need to get um to keep this boat sustained firstly under passage when we are using an autopilot for heavy use but secondly also um the real-time data will come with time so let's just go and have a look at the coach roof. I know that the solar panels were here the other day. In fact, there they are. So we have all our solar panels there. And this looks like a dog's breakfast, but it is all covered in blue and everything is covered up protectively to make sure that everything, nothing gets scuffed or scratched. So one of the questions we've had is about engine room access. There's a lot to unpack here because this is one of the things that we definitely wanted to talk about when we specified Ruby Rose 2 and talked to Seawind about the importance of engine room access for us. Let us take a dive into this locker and show you exactly what there is to see. So things to notice, gas struts, small point, but super important. Handrail in, step down, Step, step, three steps to get in. Okay, so you're gonna get me from here. In, oh, engine room access. Let me just show you my legs, my knees. We have about 18 inches of access here, which brings us into a position where I can see the alternators. I can get those alternators in, so I can see how that's working. Oil change, there, so oil, top up there fuel filter there can i get a strap spanner in this is important can i get a strap spanner onto that yes filtration system yes i can access that second alternator there i can access that another fuel filtration system i can access that raw water strainer emergency steering system well, the up the, the rod. Then we've got batteries there. Water there, all good, all really good. So the Ruby Rose never had inspection hatches. As I promised you, James Scanzella, he wants to talk about the modifications on between hole one after the test sale. So thank you for taking this time. I know you're super busy. That's right. Tell us about the mods. What are you what are we doing? Well, I thought maybe I should just quickly go through what did we do to find what was wrong. Yep. And then maybe a brief overview of the different kinds of things we found. Yep. 
and then what we're doing about it. Okay. I don't know whether we can cover all that in the short time we got, but we'll Probably see how can. we go. Probably can. So the first step was the process of finding what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of ways we do that. So we had factory testing. Yep. We had dockside testing and checking. We then went and did our, we call it the, the Vungtau test because we went off shore yeah. to Vungtau. Uh -huh. And then we come back to the dock side and rectify what we weren't happy with. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of like the, the break-in kind of uh, testing, make sure the boat is going to be able to handle any kind of serious sailing, which is what you went through. Yeah, I um, failed though. Yeah. The failing was me. It was, it was anything else. It was actually, yeah, I, I, I felt well, Obviously, we didn't want to send the boat out straight off the factory up to a big, long sailing testing program without knowing that everything was going to, you know, the boat was safe yep. and everything was going to work well. So in this process here, we found things we either weren't happy with or needed improvement yep. or didn't like the color of it or whatever. So the whole variety of all sorts of things, you know, could be interior hardware, something that just didn't look right. And then there, from there, then you did your, the sail up and then there was the sail back down. Yep. So this one was upwind, this one was mostly downwind. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of the more serious sailing. And then out of that, we got observations, we call them. We had, you know, for instance, the sail maker, on board. Yeah. We had the rig, uh, rigging company yeah. that built the rig or designed the rig on the boat. Yeah. We had the naval architects that designed the boat on the boat. So that was really a very technical oh, kind of crew. Fun. So, you know, Richard, as you're aware, came back with a fairly long list mm -hmm. of, you know, this doesn't really function well, we could do better here, or, and so that's what's going on at the moment, mostly interior rectifications. As far as the f sailing function, we didn't find very much. Okay. I have upgraded a couple of blocks that looked like they were worn mm -hmm. a bit more than they should have been. I think we changed out a clutch that we felt needed to be upgraded. So there was a few upgrades. We added a snap shackle to the Screecher 2-to-1. Uh -huh. uh, we felt that the D-shackle just wasn't it, up to it. Well, it works, but it's not practical. So there was a lot of small little things that we upgraded because it felt it was needed. Okay, and are you allowed to share the salient items on your list? Mostly like upgrade a clutch. We found a couple of clutches mislabeled. Yes. Where we'd crossed them over. We found the, um, as I say, snap shuck we needed to add. We had an issue with an electric winch and we found that that, that was to do with the deck, yep. not the winch. And we yes. had to have to remove the winch and repair the deck. Yep. And, and reinforce the, it. Yep, reinforce it. So and what about the interior ones? What are the interior things that received the most attention? Some of the cabinets, there was like, if it was a tall space, and he had a single shelf and it was decided that it would, the space was too large and needed to have two shelves instead of one shelf. So mostly it's practicality? It's yeah, mostly practicality. practicality. You know, Richard felt there wasn't enough area to have a uh, like a books shelf or yes. somewhere to store books. And fiddles. I noticed that there's more fiddles than an Irish band. The, well. Yeah, so he had a lot of fiddles, a lot of like uh, hand grips, yeah. you know, because of the weather conditions you're in, it was yep. pretty extreme. He felt that you know, in those conditions, you need to be able to get around inside yep. the boat without falling over. Yep. So we added horizontally along the um, port side mm -hmm. two kind of handrail, timber handrails, so you've got something you can they grab. Look they look good as well. Yeah, we did the same on the starboard side. Uh -huh. And then even going down the companion way, we also added some grabs. Oh, there's, there's grabs galore. Sail maker was very happy with the sails. Yeah. Like, I don't think they're making any changes at all to yeah. the sails, so he's very happy with that. Yep. I did tweak a couple of things on the mast, mostly just to improve the functionality, not nothing serious. I think hardware wise, we got it pretty right. Yep. I mean, we spent a lot of time on the engineering and checking loads and doing all the necessary checks with all the, all the hardware suppliers. And I think we were 99% right. Perfect. Okay. If you have any questions about this list, <laughs> let us know down below and we will obviously try it wherever we can to keep you informed. So James, thank you so much. Yep, sure. Um, he's got a, a, a day of bit crazy busy today, again. Every day is the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this one. I'll be back next week. Uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. 
subscribe to the channel and I will see you all again next week. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you.